and press that button. In the meantime, we're waiting on others who are coming in, you know, and uh, I know everybody isn't coming at the same time. So let's believe God that he's going to do amazing things among us today. So press that button and um, get somebody involved in this very, very important study. We had quite a number of people uh, yesterday, uh, and you, you know, you're following us in this study of the book of Acts, Acts of the Apostles, or rather, Acts of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Isaiah 59, 14, we're going to start off with for time of, of devotions. Isaiah 59, 14. That's the passage we're dealing with. So, um, let's pray. Glory be to God. Father, we give you thanks. We give you honor. We give you glory. We give you praise. You're the Lord of Lords. You're the King of all kings, the mighty God, the everlasting Father. God, today we bring uh, the nation before you. We bring your people before you. We bring all of us before you as human beings, vulnerable and um, exposed to all kinds of ills and all kinds of bombardments here and there. Lord, from the environment and uh, this whole uh, COVID-19 situation has just unsettled so many people. Lord, we are here again in this time of devotion. Uh, we call upon your name because your word says, call upon me and I will answer. And I will show you great and mighty things that you do not know. Father, we pray, oh God, right now, as we call upon you, that you're going to intervene in our situation. We intercede so that you can intervene. Hallelujah. We intercede so you can intervene because we need your intervention right now, O oh God. Hallelujah. Father, we just bless you. We just thank you, God. Just lift your hands and give God praise as we begin this time of devotion. Hallelujah. Give God honor. Give him glory because he is the Lord of lords and the King of all kings. Magnify his name right now with me. Let's give God praise in Trinidad and Tobago all over the nation right now in spite of what's happening. If you're, if you're viewing outside of Trinidad and Tobago, uh, you give God praise too as well. If you're, if you're viewing in another nation or, um, you know, any nation around the world right now, just give God praise because this that we're talking about here is affecting the entire world. This COVID-19. Hallelujah. But uh, the scripture says in Psalm 91, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Noisome pestilence, creating real havoc. COVID-19, noisome pestilence. He shall deliver us from that noisome pestilence. Hallelujah. And it goes on to say, a thousand shall fall aside and 10,000 at the right hand but they shall not come near us. No plague shall come near a dwelling. No plague. You're going to speak that word. You see, the word of God is powerful. When you speak the word, the word sets up a, 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 a protective shield around us. Hallelujah. No plague shall come nigh our dwelling. You speak that word over your life. Speak that word over your children. Speak that word over your house. Hallelujah. Speak that word as you travel, uh, uh, you know, uh, on a maxi taxi. Speak that word as you sit in a taxi. Speak that word as you get to work. Speak that word over your office. No plague shall come nigh my dwelling. Once I am here, no plague shall come nigh my dwelling. And you have the authority, you have the power, all right, to curse that thing in the name of Jesus. Yes, you have the power as a child of God. Why? Because it is pertaining to death and destruction. And so God has given us authority. He says, nothing shall by any means hurt us. So go back to the word again in Luke chapter 10 and verse 19. Hallelujah. Jesus says, behold, I give you power. I give you exousia. Hallelujah. you got to recognize what you have right now. Exousia. Behold, I give you exousia to tread upon serpents and upon scorpions. Exousia means delegated authority. Exousia means limitless authority. Exousia means authority that comes from the supreme authority of God. Exousia. Behold, I delegate to you my power. I give to you. I allow you to use my power in the earth. 
Behold, I give you exousia to tread upon serpents and upon scorpions. Hallelujah. And you see, that may not describe the coronavirus, but then it says, and over all the power of the enemy. That is the power of death and destruction. Hallelujah. I give you power. I give you authority over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Take that word. Hold on to that word. Apply that word. Nothing shall by any means hurt me. Declare it wherever you go. Nothing shall by any means hurt me. Hallelujah. You speak the word. Declare that word. That's how you're going to live. Speak that word over your life because the word of God is quick and is powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrows is a discerner of the very thoughts and intents of the heart. So, Father, this evening we bring the nation, we bring your people before you. Oh, God, we declare in the name of Jesus, no plague shall come nigh our dwelling. No plague. Hallelujah. We take authority over this coronavirus, this COVID-19 that is devastating so many lives. Oh God, and have so many people nervous and jittery. God, we pray right now for Trinidad Bigo. We pray, oh God, for those who don't know you and even those who know you. I pray, oh God, as the word of God says, you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. I declare right now, oh God, that there be faith and fear should not be part of anybody's profile right now. I pray, God, that the trust and the level of faith in you shall rise. The level of trust and faith in you shall now rise, O oh God, even as we engage in this devotion today. I pray, God, that, Lord, nobody shall be panicky Nobody shall panic right now because you are able to do all things. You have the power to do all things. So we come against that panicky fear. We come against that, that, that torment. As the scripture says, fear is torment. But there's no fear in love. There's no fear in love. Hallelujah. In 1 John chapter 4, there is no fear in love. For perfect love, cast away all fear. Come on, receive the perfect love of God right now. And let fear depart from you. Let uh, trepidation depart from you right now in the name of Jesus. Everything that threatens you, your sense of well-being, I declare, shall depart from you right now. Because, you know, it's, it's natural to think that, suppose, suppose, suppose it happens, suppose. No, just declare the word of God. That's where you need to get saved. If you're not saved right now, you need to get saved. Because it's when you're saved, you have the right to use God's word. When you're saved, you have the right to apply uh, the word of God. Then the word of God is going to uh, be activated from your mouth when you're saved. So I, 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 I believe that there's some of you looking at me right now. You need to give your life to Jesus Christ right now. Right now to take that fear away from you because fear is torment. Fear could destroy you. Hallelujah. Boy, your heart in prayer. And if you're a backslider, come back to God now. Use the same prayer to come back to the Lord. Say with me, Father, thank you for this moment of decision. I make a decision now to turn to you, Lord, to come back to you, Father. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Oh God, Lord, bring me back to you. Reconcile me to you. Today, I will live for you from this day. I will serve you with all my heart, with all my strength. You are my savior. You are my Lord. You are my King. Thank you for removing fear from my life and giving me peace and giving me joy and giving me strength. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. All right, let's look at our, our declarations for today, our devotions for today. It's taken from Isaiah 59 and verse 14. Hallelujah. And it says, Justice is turned back. And righteousness stands afar off. For truth is fallen in the street and equity cannot enter. And the theme is time of justice slash judgment. Time of justice slash judgment. Hallelujah. And these devotions were edited by uh, Sister Tricia 
uh, Kwashi Boni. According to the prophet Isaiah, as a consequence of transgression, lying, dishonesty, departure from God, revolt and oppression in the nation, there was no justice, referring to what was taking place in Israel at the time. Righteousness stood afar off. God was seeing from heaven. And he saw righteousness, righteousness, yeah? Standing afar off. There was no righteousness in the land. Truth had failed. Truth had failed and was fallen in the street. Truth was being trampled in the street. A picture of today's society. And equity could not enter. Equity, that is equal uh, distribution of goods and services where people receive that which was necessary for their livelihood. Okay, equity could not enter. So justice was strained. Justice was uh, having serious, serious um, difficulties in being expressed. In the eyes of God, such a dilemma requires someone who can stand in a gap or intercede in prayer. So the scripture says, God looked down from heaven, Isaiah 59, and he saw that there was no justice, and he described the scenario of righteousness standing afar off and so on. And the scripture says, I looked for an intercessor, and I found none. I was surprised that there was no intercessor. Well, you know, I believe that God is not surprised today because we are interceding. Hallelujah. But it just tells you how important intercession is. When you see situations in your nation, situations around you, in your family, that are unfair, or things that are really unjust and, 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 and dishonest, you don't know what to do about it, intercede. Intercede. Get down on your knees. Talk to God on your job. Intercede. Because whenever these things show up, God expects to hear from intercessors. He expects to hear from people who would indic indicate to him that he is the one to solve the problem. He's the one that they depend upon to solve the problem. And if you try to do it on your own and try to figure it, out, figure it on, your own, on your own, then you, you, you miss God. And you miss the opportunity to see the hand of God in operation. And that's why you need to pray for the nation, pray for nations around the world that in the midst of all this COVID hurrah and all the, 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 the problems that are happening, that people are going to turn to God. They're going to call upon God. That intercessors will rise up in these various nations and call upon God. Because when these things begin to happen, God expects to hear from his people. Right? You, sometimes you look at what's happening around the world. You're not hearing the voice of the church. You're not hearing the voice of intercessors. You're not hearing what's happening. Maybe they're praying silently. Maybe uh, somewhere in the background. But there is need for intercessors. And everybody needs to be an intercessor. Not just special people who have special ways of praying. No. An intercessor is every believer. Every believer should be an intercessor. Every believer should learn to seek the face of God, should have that uh, confidence that when you call upon God, he's going to answer, should have that radical faith to believe that uh, what you are seeing in your faith's eye is going to come to pass. Hallelujah. That's the, 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 the disposition of an intercessor. An intercessor sees things that are to come and stays there with God, wrestles with God until those things come to pass in the physical or in actuality. Hallelujah. An intercessor must be a visionary. You must be seeing what you expect God to do. Because uh, if you're not seeing what you expect God to do, your intercession can be short-lived. You will get up because you're not seeing it, and therefore, well, you're not too sure. But if you're seeing it, even if there might be interferences, or even if time, hallelujah, it has, has been prolonged, with regard to the answers coming, yet you're going to stay there because you're seeing what God has for you. Like Isaiah says in Isaiah 62, right? He says, for Zion's sake and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not hold my peace. I will not stay silent. Hallelujah. 
Why? Until her righteousness goes forth as brightness. So he saw righteousness going forth as brightness. And until her salvation goes forth as a burning lamp, he saw salvation going forth as a burning lamp. So he said, I will not stop until that happens. And that's what we ought to, to do as intercessors, as prayer warriors, as believers in Christ. We ought to be able to see based on the Word of God. And the Word of God provides us with a, a lot of, 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 of guides as to what to expect from God. And once you have that expectation, and you can see that through your spirit's eye, you will not give up the intercession. You will keep pressing. Too many people give up in, in prayer. Hallelujah. And as a result, very little happens. Because if you give up, then God says, okay, you don't depend on me any, anymore. You don't trust me anymore. So, you know, until you learn the lesson, things will continue. <laughs> in Isaiah's scenario, unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, none, no intercessor could be found. So God outfitted himself with righteousness as a breastplate. God said, I myself will do it. But you see, when God moves to do things in that way, he does this. He destroys a lot of people. Right? If God can find intercessors, intercessors will mitigate God's wrath. If God has to do it himself, look out. People are going to be, be destroyed. So God outfitted himself with righteous, righteousness as a breastplate, salvation as a helmet, together with garments of vengeance for clothing. He put on zeal as a cloak and fully repaid wrongdoers, fully repaid wrongdoers according to their deeds and recompense his enemies. Our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And his principles are universal and timeless. Therefore, we know that he treats with injustice the same way as he did in Isaiah's time today. He treats with injustice. He hates injustice. But if you have been unjustly treated, if you're one of those people who have been robbed or who have been, you know, um, lied upon and for no reason at all, you suffered as a result, I want you to open your mouth and call upon God right now and say, God, you are my God and you hate injustice. And therefore, you will find justice for me right now. And believe it. Don't doubt. Believe it. And as you believe, God will intervene because he hates injustice. He's going to intervene and get justice for you. Father, we declare that today we are the intercessors. Is that something? Fantastic. We are the intercessors that God has been looking for. We are the intercessors that you are looking for in these times. And we stand in the gap for a nation. Come on, today. We stand in the gap, the time that we have. We stand in the gap for a nation. Hallelujah, tonight, this evening, we are standing in the gap for a nation. We are standing in the gap when people don't pray, people can't pray, people uh, don't have access to God. We have access to God. We are the ones that God is expecting, hallelujah, to, 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 to call upon him. He's waiting to hear our voices to save the nation. Yeah, I say God is waiting to hear our voices to save the nation. Lift your voice, hallelujah, with me right now and say, God, save our land. God, intervene. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Let our land not be brought to reproach, O oh Father. Lord, let this COVID-19 not spread among us. In the name of Jesus, Father, intervene. We stand in the gap for the rest of the people. We stand between the living and the dead. Hallelujah. Like Aaron did with the censor. And we declare in the name of Jesus, this COVID virus must cease. It must stop in our nation. We call upon your name, O oh God. With one voice, we lift Hallelujah, that sound to you right now. We declare that heaven shall respond. Heaven shall respond to us. We prophesy to this land, to the, throughout the length and breadth of this nation, O oh God, that heaven is responded. Angels are going forth right now. Lord, to dismantle the, 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 the molecules of that virus in the name of Jesus. Father, you can do it. Your people call upon you. We intercede on behalf of this nation right now. We call upon your name to root out injustice and corruption from a land and to establish righteousness, equity, and, and truth. Lord, we have seen much corruption and much injustice and much raci racialism in our land. Oh God, to the point of hatred. Oh God, Father, we break that thing right now in the name of Jesus. We declare the blood of Jesus Christ against all racism, against all racism in this nation, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Your blood is released against it. In the name of Jesus, it must not show its ugly head in this nation. It must not. 
It must not explode in this nation. Father, you've been good to us so far over these years because of a prayer, because of seeking your face, hallelujah, and putting this nation before you. We thank you for what you've done because Trinidad Tobago could have been uh, like, a, like, a, like a, uh, an explosive uh, powder keg here. But God, you've kept us. And we thank you for that. Hallelujah. Therefore, let everyone have reverential fear of your name. Avenge all disobedience, O oh God, today. Today we fulfill our obedience at the place of prayer, at the place of, of devotions as we are here today. As we humble ourselves before a just God, we humble ourselves before you, you are just God. Fairness, justice, and righteousness will no longer stand afar off. We decree and declare that equity, truth, and integrity shall permeate all systems of this land. Let me say it again. We decree and declare that equity, truth, and integrity shall permeate all systems of this land. Hallelujah. Give God some praise. Give God some glory. All right. You, know, you can pick up your devotional at Divine Econo Fellowship. All right. During the day, we have one or two people there. So you can pick up your devotional. So please get this devotional. It's very, very, very important that you can use to pray for your nation every day. Remember, the, 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 the name of the devotion is Devotions for Saving a Nation. So every time you pick up this book and you study this book and you read it, Hallelujah. And you meditate on it. You are actually praying a prayer for saving your nation. If you're concerned about your nation, then you need to get this book and, you know, just go through it. And, you know, do the backlogs perhaps that you didn't do before and pray for your nation. Pray for your nation. These are compilations of, of DD prayers over the years. Hallelujah. And it's so fantastic, so powerful. All right, I'm sure some of you are anxious. In fact, all of you are anxious to get into the book of Acts again today. And we said we're going to be looking at the passage from verse 5 of Acts chapter 2. So far, so good. We have explained to you the core experience of the baptism, what it is, hallelujah, as uh, opposed to uh, the impact, uh, the core experience that's stirring on the inside and the Holy Ghost fills you, hallelujah. And there was a meeting uh, rendezvous between you and the Holy Spirit, out of your spirit and the Holy Spirit, which gives you that back home feeling, that joy unspeakable. You can't express it because of who you have met. You have met your relative, as it were. <laughs> Hallelujah. And there was, uh, I mean, you know, just ecstasy and, 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 and the kind of delight, rapturous delight you can't even explain. That's the joy that allows you now to to, to speak forth in language that you don't know, language of your spirit. You see, your spirit is activated, and when your spirit is activated in, 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 in um, union with the Holy Spirit, there's a joy that is beyond words, a joy that is beyond uh, normal expression. So tongues come forth, and then the Holy Spirit, of course, uses that joy to cause you to speak all manner of, of, of language. You know, we are multilingual in our basic self. Yeah, I say in our spirit, we are multilingual. Holy Spirit can give us different, different tongues, different um, types of tongues, diverse types of tongues. Hallelujah. Yeah, we are multilingual. We are privileged. If you're a child of God, you're privileged. And especially if you're filled with the Holy Spirit and you desire to be filled with the Holy Spirit, it's a great privilege to be able to speak that kind of language. Hallelujah. Because it doesn't only um, speak mysteries to God, but it ministers to you. There's some research has been done in terms of speaking in tongues, and they found that um, something happens to the brain. as a kind of, of healing of the brain, even the physical brain. When one, you know, relaxes the mind and just speak in tongues, there's a ministry that comes back to the brain and heals certain um, dimensions of the of the human mind hallelujah yes just relax your your your, your mind and just uh, let instead of formed or, or, or organized language uh, you know be spoken you just speak spontaneously as the Holy Spirit gives you to speak 
that has a feedback on the mind. The research will tell you. So you can do the research and, you know, go on Google or somewhere and, 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 and research speaking in tongues. And there have been some fantastic findings with regard to uh, the power of speaking in tongues. So it's not just for Pentecostals. It is for everybody who uh, recognized uh, the, 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 the need for a deep relationship with God. Hallelujah. And uh, as a result, there's all kinds of benefits coming forth. So first five says, uh, so the, 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 the apostles, they are now um, filled with the Holy Spirit. And now this is an account of the crowd, how the crowd reacted, what happened in Jerusalem as a result of this pandemonium, of this noise. And it seems as though not only the noise of the voices of the people, but while the people were speaking, this sound from heaven uh, was being heard as well. It wasn't just the voice of the people. Remember the scripture says, and they came from heaven, a sound as of a rushing mighty wind. And it seems as though that, 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 that sound was there over that upper room or inside the upper room. You're, like people were hearing this, whoo, whatever song it was. I don't want to uh, attempt to even, uh, you know, uh, simulate it. But something was happening here. It says, and they were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men from every nation in the heaven. Why? Because this was the day of Pentecost. Pentecost was a, a, a feast that was observed by um, Jews all over the world. So they came back to Jerusalem to celebrate Pentecost. Pentecost means 50. It was a celebration of jubilee. All right. Excitement. Yeah. Great noise and excitement. Joy. You know, Pentecost. But this was a different kind of excitement. This was way beyond the normal excitement. And God chose a day of excitement to birth the church. Realize that? God chose a day of excitement. Pentecost is a time of jubilee, a time of celebration. He used that occasion to birth the church, which means that the church should be a place of joy, a place of excitement. Church should not be dead. Yeah, church should not be something you know, starchy and, 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 you know, full of, of, of lit, just, uh, you know, uh, liturgy and, you know, it's a reading here and a reading there. No, church should be spontaneous, beautiful worship, lifting your hands and giving God great, crazy, crazy praise. Mm. Hallelujah. That's what happened on the day of Pentecost. And the church was built into that kind of fire and excitement and joy. Hallelujah. And the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So what else should we expect? Hallelujah. But joy from the church of Jesus Christ. So let nobody condemn you. Ah, because you're rejoicing so much. Because you're so happy. Yeah, don't let nobody condemn you. This is how you should be. Because of the Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, you're part of that Pentecost, Pentecost uh, 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 celebration. Celebration of joy. Hallelujah. Now the kingdom makes it even more um, established. So they were dwelling, all these Jews in Jerusalem. And when this sound occurred, it says, when this song occurred, hallelujah, which song? I believe the voice of the people, as I said before, and that rushing mighty wind song. It was just there in that upper room. Hallelujah. It was noise abroad, the scripture says. All right. The, 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 the song went out far and wide. And maybe as people heard it, they, 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 they call on others. Hey, something's happening in the, in the upper room. Something's happening. Let's go to see what's going on. The multitude came together. They came together from all over Jerusalem and were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. They were confused. They were puzzled. They were shocked. Everyone heard these apostles and disciples speaking in his own language. Hallelujah. Which means that uh, what started as the experience where they were giving God 
praise and worship and speaking forth in tongues and expressing the joy of that experience. Hallelujah. Turned into a virtual preaching. Turned into a delivery of the message of salvation. Using the same phenomena of glossolalia, of tongues. This time, not to worship and to praise and to glorify and to be in ecstasy, hallelujah, but to bring the message of salvation to those who came running to the upper room. And that's what God intends for all of us, hallelujah. The experience of the Holy Spirit is not to be kept on the inside. The experience of the Holy Spirit is to be turned into a vehicle for spreading the gospel. In this particular case, all right, um, they could not just simply speak in their Galilean tongue. Now, these were people who, when they were from Galilee, right? Um, verse 7 says, Then they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look, look, are not all these who speak Galileans? Now, Galilee is on the northern part of Israel. If you've ever been to Israel, Galilee is in the northern part of Israel, about over 100 miles from Jerusalem. But these are the people that Jesus worked with, all right? In, because he was born in Nazareth. And Nazareth is a town just outside of Galilee, all right? And the, the disciples were selected from among those in that area, okay? Uh, or the Peter and his, and his brother and so on, whose, whose father was a fisherman, fisherman all right? Um, they were called um, by Jesus as he walked on the shores of Galilee, call them to uh, be apostles and disciples of his. And they came out of that area. So when Jesus was about to leave, he left, he left instructions to these people to go into Jerusalem, not in Galilee, go into Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the Father. So they went into Jerusalem and they were camping out in this upper room. So these were Galileans, and perhaps everybody knew that, you know, these were a group of there was a group, group group of Galileans in town, you know, because they came and they said, "These are Galileans. How come they're speaking in each of our language? This is amazing." So they were confused. How come? But God is a God of the impossible. And God works in mysterious ways to perform His wonders. God directed and redirected the tongues so that each person heard their own tongue expressed. And not just for speculation or for, um, you know, curiosity, but with a definite message of salvation. They heard them speak the wonderful works of God. Hallelujah. That's what they delivered. Wonderful works of God. Yeah, I think it's in verse 11. Christians, Arabs, we hear them speak our own tongues. That wonderful, or the wonderful works of God. So they were speaking the wonderful works of God. They were actually spreading the gospel. They were speaking about the fact that Jesus Christ came and he died and rose again. and That sort of thing. That was a message that they spoke. But in the language of each of the people that came to the upper room, and they're from all over the world, Jews from all over the world. Right? They, they, they spoke in the language of their particular geographical area. And they were surprised, shocked to hear these ordinary Galileans speaking as if they were learned, as if they were, they were linguists, they were speaking so clearly the language of all these people who were in Jerusalem. So let's look at the, the, the reading again. Continue reading there. Um, verse 8. And how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born? Passions and Medes and Elamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, uh, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya. Wow! Adjoining Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes. Proselytes were those who were converted to Jews. They were not 
born Jews, but they, uh, they wanted to be Jews, so they were converted to, to Jews, the proselytes. Christians and Arabs, we hear them speak in our own tongues the wonderful words of God. And God does that sometimes. Hallelujah. You go to another country, uh, and sometimes God is going to allow you to speak under the power of the Holy Spirit, speak the language of the people. If it's just one sentence, two sentences, it happens. Hallelujah. God does amazing things. Why? Because God knows all languages. He knows, Holy Spirit knows all languages. So it's not surprising that He's going he gonna to give you a language to suit the particular culture that you are in. It's quite possible that you can speak Spanish uh, under the power of the Holy Spirit or French. Never knew anything about French, never learned French, but you spoke French. Hallelujah. Because God wanted that to be done at that particular point in time. So don't put anything beyond God. He is a miracle-working God. And these are some of the miracles that God works very often. So they were all amazed and perplexed. Not just amazed, but perplexed, puzzled. How could these things be? How could these things be? Saying to one another, whatever could this mean? What does it mean? These are signs. You know, speaking in tongues uh, is a sign. You know, a sign of the power of God, a sign of the authority of God. Hallelujah. That's why Simon the sorcerer was so um, confused himself when he saw and heard the, those who were converted through the preaching of Philip speak in tongues as Peter and John laid hands on them. They spoke forth in tongues. It was a sign to him that this is not normal. This is not normal. Uh, this, this points towards something more powerful. But of course, he still had his, his bad habits, and so he tried to buy the power. Hallelujah. But speaking in tongues is a sign that this is not natural. God is with this person. Super. Hallelujah. Supernatural power is operating from the inside. Others mock and said, they are full of new wine. Well, you always have the skeptics. You can always have those who, in spite of what is being done, will always be skeptical, will always be doubters. You always are going to have doubters. In spite of how convincing the, 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 the situation is, and other people are praising God as a result. Many people are wondering about what's going on. Many are seeing the wonderful works of God. But you have these diehards, these doubters, these persons that have already made up their minds, some of them agents of Satan themselves, yes, who would always doubt. And you can't be sidetracked. You can't be put off by those skeptics. Some of them are professional skeptics. Professional skeptics. Their minds have been so conditioned already that some of them may, even, may, may hardly even get saved because of that kind of position they've taken already. Uh, but we ought not to be thrown off by uh, those people. We ought not to be stopped in terms of our spreading of the gospel by such criticisms because we know who we are. You know who God is. And yeah, once you, one of the keys to, to being able to, to resist and to survive uh, criticism is to know who you are. If you know who you are, it doesn't matter what people say. If you know what God has called you to do, it doesn't matter what people say. <laughs> yes? Because people will speak against you in spite of how good you are. You could smile, you could be the nicest person. I mean, you could hug people, you could whatever. Hey, you're going to find somebody allowing Satan to use them mm -hmm. to speak against you. The best. Mm -hmm. Hey, don't worry about that. They did it against Jesus. I say, they did it against Jesus. Jesus suffered that same kind of problem. People just speaking against him for, for no reason at all. Hallelujah. And therefore, we ought to um, keep our minds stayed on the Lord. Once you know who you are, once you know God has called you, once you know that you're a child of God, receive all those... Um, Criticism, yeah, with, 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 with a disposition where they go no further 
than when they're identified. They go no further. They stay right there. Hallelujah. And you keep moving on. They stay right there and you keep moving on. The criticism stay right there and you keep moving on. Don't carry those criticisms with you. Don't carry those things with you. Hallelujah. Don't carry those criticisms with you. You move on and leave those things behind. Leave them dropping, falling on the side. Hallelujah. They have no, absolutely no effect on your life. Look at verse 14. All right, so these people are now rushing. They have rushed to the upper room. They are there and they are mesmerized. They are amazed at what they see. And here's the opportunity now for Peter to preach the gospel. Hallelujah. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, and that's why we need the move of God in our lives. We need the move of God in the churches because that is what's going to attract uh, the unsaved people. Hallelujah. See, sometimes we think unsaved people need to have faith, but they can't have more faith than they have because they don't know the word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. So they don't know the word. We are the ones who know the word. And we are the ones now to demonstrate the power of God. Hallelujah. So that they will see. They are convinced by sight, not by faith. We, as believers in Christ, we must be convinced by faith because we have passed that stage of just sight. We are convinced by faith. We live by faith. The just shall live by faith. But the unsaved can't live by faith because they don't know the word of God. So what they need to see is a demonstration of the power of God. That's why every child of God needs to ask God, not just apostles and pastors and fivefold ministers, every person, because wherever you are, you're supposed to demonstrate the power of God. Hallelujah. And, and you, you're doing it because the unsaved people, they cannot exercise faith except you know, to, 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 to believe that um, they could jump in a taxi and end up in Port Spain because that's where they're going. That's the level of faith they have. But in terms of faith towards God, that is going to come when we demonstrate the power of God. And they see they have, they have at their disposal signs. What, what does a sign do? A sign points you to where you're supposed to be going. So when the church does signs and wonders, hallelujah, people who don't know where they're going, they will begin to recognize the direction they ought to take. And that's why all of us need to demonstrate that. But Peter, standing up with the, with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judah, and all who dwell in Jerusalem. So there's a Galilean now. He's from Galilee. Remember, he's from Galilee. They're in Jerusalem. A group of Galileans are now in Jerusalem. And they were delivering the word of God to the people of Jerusalem. Fantastic. Hallelujah. Men of Judah, and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you. And heed my words. Oh, you know, Peter, brass faced Peter, just delivering the word of God. And now he's under the power of the Holy Ghost. Wow. He's delivering with kind of drive. And the word of God is going forward with power. For these are not drunk, as you suppose. I, I, I can see, I perceive that many of you are saying they're drunk by the way in which they're behaving. These are not drunk, as you suppose. Hallelujah. This is not about. about wine and strong drink. No, 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 no. Hallelujah. These are not drunk as you suppose since it is only the third hour of the day. Third hour of the day. That is around maybe around nine-ish. Yes, third hour of the day. They, were, if they, they began at six in the Jewish situation. Uh, the days began at different points in time during the year. Right? So the third hour tend to differ in terms of exactly when. But let's say it's nine-ish three hours after uh, the, the, the day would have begun, if the day began at six. Okay? And so, you don't expect a person to be drunk at that point in time, because it's too early. Well, of course, in some cases, some alcoholics are drunk by six o'clock in the morning. Eh? <laughs> but the normal thing is that by nine o'clock, people do not engage in that. Some people just getting up, or some people, you know, at work, you usually find that kind of thing happening in the evening time. And guys go for a line and that sort of thing. All right. But um, Peter says that these are not drunk as you suppose since it is only the third hour of the day. Hey, but let me tell you what this is. Hallelujah. 
But this is that. Somebody say, this is that. This is that. What you hear, what you see now. All the phenomena that has, have, 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 you know, been demonstrated here. This is that. If you know your Bible, this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And I love Joel. I love Joel. Joel is a prophet to the young people. Eh? Joel is a prophet to the young people. And we, 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 we're dealing now with the Joel generation. The coming forth of the Joel generation. God is raising up the Joel generation. That's the next generation to be established in the earth. The last generation of the church. The Joel generation. God gave me that revelation. We've been working in the book. Hallelujah. It will come out pretty soon. Hallelujah. About the raising up, the coming of the Joel generation. Mighty army that God is raising up in these days from within the ruins of our day, within the mayhem and the blackness and the darkness and all the explosions and all the rioting and the wars of our day. Hallelujah. There's coming forth a mighty, powerful army called the Joel generation. Hallelujah. And it is an army that is formidable. Fire goes before them and fire behind them. And the God of Eden is before them. Just a whole profile of that generation is in Joel chapter 2. Read Joel chapter 2 from verses 1 through 11. And you're going to see a description of that Joel generation. Hallelujah. And so Joel is the one who prophesied concerning this uh, baptism with the Holy Spirit. In Joel chapter 2 and verse 28. And in that passage, Joel, because of his focus on young people, uh, Joel described the re re reception of the outpouring, focusing primarily on the young people. It shall come to pass, Joel says, that I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. Verse 17, your sons and your daughters, see, your sons and daughters, the first recipient of this outpouring should be your sons and daughters. Let's believe God. Let's pray for young people. Let's not condemn our young people right now. Let's believe God is going to pour his spirit upon the young people. That's what we want to see. That's what we want to see in these days. Hallelujah. That the young people will be recipients of this outpouring. That we're going to encourage our young people, hallelujah, to be in church. Encourage them to seek the face of God. Encourage them to call upon God. Uh, let them understand that there's emptiness outside there, nothing but emptiness, vanity of vanities. Hallelujah. And let them seek the real alternative, which is the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Not the power of divination and all these crazy things outside there and witchcraft. No. Hallelujah. Some of them have been following uh, the, the, the great um, musical stars and all these people who are deep into the occult and doing all kinds of crazy things and um, following Egyptian religion and doing all kinds of occult activities with pyramids, etc. Uh, that's where the young people are going now, looking for uh, the filling of that empty void on the inside. And here is a promise uh, that God has given to us with regard to the young people. This is the real deal right here. Hallelujah. Not what the young people are doing right now. Crazy things they're doing. Encourage your young people to seek the face of God and get baptized with the Holy Ghost. That I will pour my spirit. It shall come to pass in the last days, says God. And I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Let's, let's, let's keep this thing fresh in our minds. They are pouring, they are pouring, they are pouring. Don't let lay... In the, in, the, in the annals of history or in the corridors of history. Let's bring it into our day now. The outpouring, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, your sons and your daughters, the same sons and daughters that the new morality want to steal, the same sons and daughters that they want to, 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 to poison uh, their minds in schools, the same sons and daughters that they want to say, um, make your own decision with regard to sex. Make your own decision with regard to gender. Those same sons and daughters, God has a plan. God has a program. God has uh, promises concerning our sons and daughters. Let's pray for our sons and daughters, people. Let's get on our knees and pray. Because this revival is coming. 
will be largely carried by the sons and daughters. I say this mighty worldwide revival coming will be largely carried by the sons and daughters, our sons and daughters. Hallelujah. That's what Joel saw. Glory be to God. It's coming. It's close. Let's pray for young people. Let's not condemn our young people. Hallelujah. It's easy to condemn them because of how they're being led. And they're being led by the adults. And the adults are the ones who have set up all kinds of crazy things for these young people to follow. But let's pray that the eyes of our young people shall be opened. And they shall see God for themselves. Hallelujah. And they shall know God for themselves. Come on. They shall have their own personal experience with God. Let's pray for them. Hallelujah. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. It's for everybody. I say this, this is our poor rings of everybody, but it begins. It begins in Joel's perspective. He sees the young people rising up and being an integral part. There's a place for the young people. Hallelujah. And it's, it's almost like they're the ones that will be leading in terms of their strength and their drive and their figure and their vitality. Yes, let's keep that in mind. The young people can really do exploits for God when they are filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire. Your old men shall dream dreams, yes. And on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy. They shall prophesy, hallelujah. Let's pray that young people are going to prophesy. Let's pray that all shall prophesy. Let's pray the church shall prophesy. Pray that you will prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above. Hallelujah. And signs in the earth beneath. Luke chapter 21, verses 25 to 20, 28. So we can find that. Luke chapter 21. Talking about signs. That's a passage that speaks of signs. Verse 25, it says, And there shall be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars. Yes. And on the earth, distress of nations. What, is, what, what the nations are going through right now is a sign. COVID virus is a sign. That widespread suffering and fear is a sign. Distress of nations with perplexity. Nations are perplexed, don't know what to do. Doctors don't, want, don't know what to do. They can't find a solution to this coronavirus. Perplexed. Some say this, some say that. And there are different views with regard to wearing of masks, all kinds of things. But people are perplexed, and that's a sign of the last days. The sea and the waves roaring. Men's hearts filling them from fear. And the expectation of those things which are coming in the earth. You know, some a sister was telling me uh, this morning that one of her co-workers, you know, was just so jittery, just 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 nervous, panicky, because when she thinks about the possibility of catching this coronavirus, just nervous, just I mean, just 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 broken, broken up, disintegrated in her mind. But let's pray that God's gonna touch such people and bring them into the place of salvation. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken in these days. The powers of the heavens are being shaken right now. Hallelujah. Heavens are open and the earth is shaken. Hallelujah. That's what Isaiah 24 says. When you read Isaiah 24, you can see where God says the powers, the, 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 the heavens are open and the earth is shaken severely. And that's why all these things are in the earth. Hallelujah. God has poured out his wrath upon the nations. Verse 27 says, Then they will see, see, the Son of Man coming in a cloud, wow, with power and great glory. Are you ready for that? Are you ready for that, people? The signs are there. Hallelujah. And once you see the signs, look up, for your redemption draws near. Because then we shall see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up when they begin to happen. I'm sure you're going to testify with me that they have begun to happen. Look up and lift up your hearts, lift up your heads actually, because your redemption draws near. 
And that's what Joel is, that's what Joel said, and that's what uh, the Apostle Peter is saying to the crowd. Hallelujah. And more so for us today because we are closer than they were. Hallelujah. We are so, so close. Hallelujah. Because uh, the reference is to these days. These days shall come to pass in the last days, says God. Hallelujah. And we, 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 we are in those times right now. Uh, verse 19 says, I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. We're going to stop there. Blood and fire and vapor of smoke. Blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun will be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. The blood moons. You've heard of the blood moons where um, the phenomenon of the earth coming between the moon and the sun, right? And the, 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 the light of the sun being filtered to the point where um, the moon appears to be bloody. Yeah, we've had four of them. The, 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 the um, occurrence of four blood moons within the last, what, five years or so. Okay, blood moons. And that is an indication of the coming of Jesus. Are you ready? Are you ready for the coming of Jesus? Time is closing in on us. By your heart and prayer, if you're not ready, say, Lord, get me ready. Lord, I need you in my life. I need Jesus now. I need to be ready. If you're a backslider, say, God, forgive me of my sins. I come back to you now. Oh, God, I want you in my life. I thank you for, for setting me free in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right? Um, if you're, if you're safe for the first time, uh, you want to call the numbers 646-0203. Uh, uh, you can call that number tomorrow, please God. 646-0203. Or uh, you can call 721-5276. All right? Or you can send a message in the chat. All right? You can send a message and you can say, I give my life to Jesus Christ. Uh, today, and I want a follow-up. I want some follow-up. So, write that in your chat right now as you are uh, listening to us, you're viewing this, this broadcast today, and indicate that you want to uh, continue serving the Lord in spirit and truth. You want some more um, help. You want um, some more teachings. Or you want to prepare yourself for baptism and uh, living for God. Hallelujah. So, continue um, next Monday, right? This is the end of the week. And so we continue with um, Acts chapter 2. We, we sort of, oh yeah, all Bible studies, one in which we, 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 we milk the word. To use a rough expression, we milk the word. We don't just jump from chapter to chapter. We actually go from verse to verse. If we have to do word to word, yes. So you get the understanding. You kind of bleed the text like, hallelujah. Uh, investigative Bible study. Hallelujah. All right, so let's, uh, let's do a communion right now. Hallelujah. Let's lift the bread before the Lord. And let's just thank God for the privilege of partaking of the communion. Lift the bread before God if you have it. I hope you have it. Hallelujah. This is what we want to do. Do it as often as we can. Hallelujah. Because we do show his debt till he comes. Father, we bless the bread and the wine today. As you partake of it, these are symbols of your body and your blood, what you did for us on the cross of Calvary. And we live it today with the power of the resurrection in Jesus' name. Let's eat together. Let's drink together. Hallelujah. Give God a praise on this Friday evening. Hallelujah. Give Him glory. Give Him honor. You've had a great week. Thank God for the week. Thank God has kept you safe and sound. Hallelujah. Of course, uh, look at our programs this weekend on uh, TTT tomorrow morning at 6.30 our broadcast there, or tele, tele, television program. All right, make sure to view it and, and share it with a friend as well. Let a friend view it. 
and then on Sunday morning at 7.30 on TV6, uh, we have another uh, television program there that we gear towards those who are saved. Hallelujah. Okay, so um, we are also looking at, at um, 8 o'clock. Our service begins at 8 o'clock. And um, so we, we don't have our actual service. We don't have a service at church, but we're going to have virtual service. Hallelujah. So you'll be uh, at home and enjoying our service. Hallelujah. Virtual service. And we thank God for that. Let's keep praying for Trinidad Bigo. Keep praying for our nation. And be sure to participate on Sunday morning, okay, at 8 o'clock. We look forward to sharing with you a powerful word, powerful word. And we, we right now in that um, message series on uh, the sovereignty of God. We are now at the point where we're talking about the just shall live by faith. We have moved from that uh, general statement to uh, that interplay between grace and faith, grace and faith. And now we're in, in uh, uh, Second Peter chapter 1. You could look at that passage where um, the apostle is admonishing us to add to our faith. We have the grace, that container, the grace there with everything we need. And so we admonish now to take that basket of faith, go into that container and just add to the basket, add to your faith, virtue, and to virtue, knowledge. Last week we dealt with knowledge. And we're going to continue with that passage, amazing passage, and see what God's going to do uh, through that word. Hallelujah. So be strong, be blessed, and keep looking up for your redemption draws near. Don't be confused now, and don't be afraid of this COVID virus. You keep, as I said before, keep speaking the word of God. Psalm 91, speak it. That will ward off anything. Speak the word of God over here. Speak, speak the word. It's quick, it's powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. It can destroy anything, the word of God. And ask God to just strengthen you in this hour. Help somebody too. Those who are afraid, those who are uh, terrified, it's time to release the gospel into their lives. Time to witness to them. Call your neighbor up, call your friend up who was afraid and frightened and say, God is with you. He wants you to turn your life over to him. This is a great opportunity to witness this weekend. Find somebody and share the gospel with them. Bless you until we see again. Bye-bye.